retro trip, we are in Rome, the eternal city. And as you can see, we're happy to be here. And we're going inside Yulia's mouth. So, okay, so, so we're going inside Yulia's mouth. And we are starting off with this beautiful view of Rome from the Musei Capitolini, located on the Capitoline Hill, one of Rome's seven hills. You'll find a lot of great pieces in the museum, like this iconic sculpture of Romulus and Remus, the legendary founders of Rome, being suckled by a she-wolf. A sculpture that I accidentally touched. Don't ask. Long story. And this dismembered child. Proper art, that. A dying Gaul. Nothing says art more than a dying man. And the original equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius. As you can see, it's a city that's absolutely teeming with art. A city that these two idiots are exploring. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. I, I don't actually know what Romans do, but I hope we did them. Ah, the Fontana di Trevi. I'd say this is definitely the most beautiful fountain I've ever seen. It makes all other water fountains look like watering cans. The Pantheon is the burial place of the artist Raphael Sanzio and this is the closest I've ever been to an artistic genius. There's a random Italian couple. I wonder what they're doing now. Do you think they'll ever see this? Wait a minute, did you think I was taking a photo of you here? No, okay, maybe. A must visit in Rome is the Roman Forum. It was the location of Rome's government buildings and the center of the city of Rome. It's located on the foot of the Palatine Hill, the most historic of Rome's seven hills. In fact, Rome originated from the Palatine Hill and there have been settlements there since around the 10th century BCE the ruins of which you can still explore. The most iconic Roman landmark is the Colosseum. Or to go with its real name, the Flavian Amphitheatre. It was actually only called the Colosseum because there used to be a colossus statue right next to it. Inside you can really feel the enormity of the structure and imagine all the violence that happened within its walls. recommend that you take the guided night tour of the Colosseum, as we did here. It's definitely worth it. If you go with a guide at night, you'll be able to access parts of the Colosseum that are usually close to the general public, like this lift that they used to bring animals onto the Colosseum floor. You also get interesting anecdotes about these usually inaccessible parts that really makes the Colosseum come to life. The Vatican inspires such awe even for a lapsed or former Catholic such as myself. There's just something about the place, perhaps its grandeur or augustness, I can't quite put my finger on it. Can I just say, the Pieta might just be the best sculpture I've ever seen. The Vatican Museum also houses one of the greatest art collections, including one of my favourite paintings, The School of Athens by Raphael. And at the end of the Vatican Museum, you enter the Sistine Chapel. Taking photos and videos in the chapel is strictly prohibited, meaning that this photo has probably made me an outlaw in Vatican City. I broke so many rules on this trip, first the she-wolf statue and now this photo. Just look at how grand St. Peter's Basilica is. There's really nothing like it. Gosh, it makes me want to be Catholic again, I think. That's it from us. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Until, Until next, next time. time. Ciao! Ciao.